So this is detecting engagement in Google Analytics. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how we might be able to uh, find uh, indicators of user engagement uh, using Google Analytics, but we'll also spend some time just talking about Google Analytics uh, in general. And please feel free to ask your, your questions about Google Analytics, uh, even if they don't relate directly to this idea of engagement. So one of the things to keep in mind um, when you're looking at whether it's Google Analytics or any other kind of, of measurement of your of your web presence or your social media presence is is to determine why. Like, why am I measuring this? Um, most of the Google Analytics that that we run for people um, is for the purpose of reporting. Uh, that's the most requests that we get. How many hits did I get? I'm just curious. I want to know. Um, but really, the better reason to measure your web presence uh, are for a couple of reasons. One is improvement. So there's things you can look at uh, within Google Analytics that might give you some indication of how you might change your web presence, change particular pages to make them uh, easier for users to find. If that's evidence that, that you find in Google Analytics, that they might be having trouble finding things or uh, to they make them more effective, to get them to spend more time on the page, or to or whatever you're trying to accomplish with your with your users who are visiting your web page. Uh, one reason to use Google Ana Analytics is to see if you're accomplishing what you want to accomplish, and if not, how you can improve uh, on that. So that's one reason to measure. The other is impact, and in extension, we do a lot of impact uh, measurement and. Are we trying to figure out, are we connecting with people? Are we making a difference in their lives? We probably can't get to that impact idea just looking at the raw data that Google Analytics uh, provides, but that's what we'll talk about today is some signals of engagement, and then we can you know, potentially draw a line from engagement to maybe more uh, significant uh, impact with additional uh, evaluation. But at least it's a start. See if your see if your web presence really is is making any difference. Another thing to think about when you're thinking about measuring your website too is to figure out what your goal is. Um, uh, me included for our AgCom website or or web services website um, or any of the ones that I'm involved in in contributing to or managing, I'm not very good at this either. Um, I don't. It's hard to determine for a content site a specific goal, but if you can start to figure that out a little bit, it can really help you utilize the data because without a goal to work towards, the data is just data, right? It'd be like if you had an extension program. Um, if you say, we want uh, people to achieve this behavior change, and then you gather data to see if they're achieving that behavior change you know, then the data makes sense. But if you don't have that goal, if you're like, well, we're delivering this program, we don't know what we want people to do with it, we just want to deliver it, and then you gather data around that, then that data is essentially meaningless. You know, it doesn't have a lot of context uh, in terms of working towards your goal. The other thing about Google Analytics is it, it is, um, Sonia and I were just talking about this a, a little bit ago earlier this afternoon, is that it, you know, is built for uh, the majority of uh, website managers and and users, and that majority exist in the for-profit world. And so in the for-profit world, a lot of times they can be much more specific about their goals, right? They want to make a sale. They want to, um, you know, have somebody subscribe to something. They, you know, they have some uh, end goal in mind. Uh, maybe it's even have someone apply for a job. Um, you know, that's the pinnacle. They start at the home page and they go through this process and they, they end up with that goal, which is some, which in Google Analytics we refer to as a conversion. So what, what are your conversions? And those are harder for us to identify um, because there might be multiple goals. Um, but the closer you can get to that sort of specific idea of what you're trying to accomplish with your web presence, um, then the more uh, effective uh, the, this data is going to be, and the more you're going to be able to put it to work for you, as opposed to just going, hmm, that's interesting. Hey, we got visits from South Africa. Great. What does that mean? Why, why should we care other than it's interesting? Okay. 
So let's talk a little bit about, about Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is how we are collecting data on the use of our websites right now. Um, before we instituted Google Analytics or started using Google Analytics, um, we were using log files. So log files have existed you know, pretty much from the, um, the time that we had web browsers. Um, and basically the log files are things that can be collected uh, by the web server about you as a visitor. Um, and it might include you know, what pages you're clicking on, obviously, because when you click on a page that the web server has to deliver that page. So uh, it collects that data. It might include what kind of browser you're using because that, that kind of information is sent uh, through as well uh, and some other things, but, but, but limited information. Um, so before we were using Google Analytics, we were really focused on you know, how many hits did this page get or how many views did this page get and those kinds of things. Um, and part of the problem with that, that log file data is um, it's, not, it's not very deep. There's not a, lot, a huge data set there. Um, you have to use different third-party tools to analyze it. Uh, it's, it's pretty much just rows in a database without, or actually rows in a text file without some tool um, to analyze that and to compile the data in some way. Um, and the other thing that we found uh, in it with NDSU uh, egg communication and, and with this, the servers that we have is that it was really susceptible to um, what we might call phantom traffic. So this is traffic that um, happens when uh, search engines, for instance, go out and index the web in order for Google or any search engine to uh, get an idea of what web pages are out there, uh, they have to build a, what's called a spider to go out and find those pages and visit each one of them. And so as those search engines do that, that could accumulate views of a web page. Um, and there's other forms of traffic as well that, that are phantom traffic. They're not real users, they're computers that are uh, hitting our websites. And so log files uh, and the tools associated with them do a, not a great job of filtering that stuff out. Google Analytics does a better job of filtering that stuff out. And it also gives us a richer data set. So it wasn't very long into the existence of Ag CMS uh, that we decided to uh, put the Google Analytics code that you need to put on your website or your web pages in order to collect this data, we decided to put that onto all the web pages in Ag CMS. So that is an important uh, distinction for anybody who's on. If, you, if your website is on the NDSU Type 03 CMS, you're not, your data is not being collected using Google Analytics. Um, it's actually being used. Uh, I, I think they're, they're collecting data on their own and, and using some of those log files and internal reporting inside of their content management system. Um, if your website is not in Ag CMS, if it's just on one of our other servers, we call them our legacy servers. There's a few websites that are still out there that aren't on Ag CMS within NDSU Ag and Extension. Um, then again, you're relying on that kind of log file thing. Just the Ag CMS sites um, have the Google Analytics code on them, at least that we put on um, uh, and collect data that way. Um, in order to see your Google Analytics, there's a couple different things you can do. One thing is you could request access, and I think at least um, there might be one or two of you on the call who have requested access um, to Google Analytics. You have to, uh, in order for me to give you access, I have to have a non-NDSU Google account for you. Um, so if you have a Gmail account personally, or if you have an Android phone, you have a Google account, uh, I can invite you using that account. I can't use your NDSU Google account for reasons unknown to me and only to ITS um, uh, at the NDSU level, but I can't invite you using your Google account. Um, so that's one way, and there's a few people who do that. Uh, the more common way that you see your Google Analytics is that you uh, ask for reports, and you might do that as a once-off, like it's that time of the year again, you need to do some reporting, you send me an email or send Sony an email and say, can you give me the numbers for my website? and we send you some reports. Um, and some of you, uh, I see Susan and Stacy are on, so for the food nutrition sites, we have some automated reports set up, so they just get automatically get monthly reports, and we can do that for you 
as well if you want to uh, to let us know that you'd like to have that okay questions or comments so far you want to jump in on the mic or type your questions in the chat I see Sonia's on too so Sonia you know you can please correct me or fill in the blank spaces that I leave okay go ahead and, and share those in the chat or interrupt me if you have any any questions whatsoever so in order to start to understand some of the metrics that we'll use to detect engagement we kind of have to get an overview of the the main metrics in in google analytics and we're going to start with sessions um, so what a session is is a is the it says here on my slide period of time that's kind of a, a bad des description but um, a session starts when somebody hits your website so in the case of how we collect our google analytics it begins as soon as they hit an ag cms site on the www.ag.ndsu.edu domain so as soon as they hit one of our pages their session starts and it lasts until they hit something that is outside of our site outside of ag cms outside of our domain um, or they close their browser um, or they, if they're just viewed one page, they hit their back button and go back to a site uh, or a page that doesn't, that isn't on our, uh, our domain, but that's what a session is. So it's the whole visit. It doesn't matter if they go from Barnes County extensions website and then click over to the food nutrition site and then, uh, click over to the plant site, department of plant sciences, uh, site. Um, those are all in our domain and they're all in egg CMS. So that would all be part of one session. But if they go to the Barnes County extension site and then they go to food nutrition and then they click on something that takes them to the National Institute of Health or USDA or something that at that point they're leaving our site and that session ends. OK. Does that make sense? Questions about a session? Okay. So another main category or main metric is users. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, those are the people who have come to our site, have at had at least one session uh, within the time period that we are seeking information for. So uh, when you're looking at your at your Google Analytics, you define a, a date range. You know, show me uh analytics for the last year or the last month or these 10 days uh, in the middle of 2014 or whatever it might be um, and so that's what you're when you're looking at that date range it's everybody who has had a session and we'll get into this later but you can sort of limit the scope of those sessions so uh, when we're looking at all users that would be anybody who's had who's visited any page uh, in our ag.ndsu.edu domain, as long as it exists on ag CMS. Um, but there's ways that you can filter that down and say, only show me sessions where the users have visited a page on my site, for instance, okay? And so that's what users are. Pretty easy concept, but if you have questions about that, let me, let me know. Page views, so, uh, we have our users right in this in this graphic it's 87,000 plus users and they uh, among them have had 120,000 plus sessions for the time period that we're looking at um, so that's their sort of total visit experience that session but within each session they might view multiple pages so when you were looking at uh, viewing a multiple pages, we refer to those as page views. So in those 120,000 sessions, the total number of page view pages that were viewed, I shouldn't say pages that were viewed, but views of pages, because some of them might be counted twice in there, are 309,252, right? Okay, so those are page views. Let me go back here. I'm going to talk about a couple other things that are pretty obvious on this slide here. So 120,000 sessions, 309,000 page views. If you divide 
the number of page views by the number of sessions, you get what's in the bottom left there, the pages per session. So in an average visit, how many pages did a user view? And so in this measurement, which I don't even remember what this was captured from, it was 2.56 pages per session. And then the other metric that you'll see there in the bottom center is the average session duration. So how long did it take them? How much time did they spend uh, in that session? And the average for this particular data set was two minutes and 27 seconds, okay? And then the last thing that you'll see down there in the corner there is the bounce rate. Uh, bounce rate is um, pretty much unique to Google Analytics. I've not seen it referenced in any other uh, context other than in Google Analytics, but it's a pretty interesting metric uh, for web pages. So let's let's take a, a look at bounce rate here. So it's kind of a complicated formula, and I'm not going to get into the bounce rate, but basically, um, what the bounce rate is is how many uh, people came to a page and just viewed that one page and then left the the domain. So they only viewed one page and then they took off somewhere else, okay? And so that um, is the bounce rate. So they might've left the site by, you know, clicking a link to a different website, clicking the back button, uh, closing their browser window, typing in a new URL, whatever, but they only looked at one page and then they were gone, they scooted. So here are some average bounce rates by industry. This is important because bounce rate can be interpreted a number of different ways. And it and it's one of the reasons why we say it's important to know what you're trying to accomplish with your website, because you can look at that number and go, oh, a bounce rate of 64.56%, that's a lot, um, seems like a lot. So that must not be a very good page. Well, it might be a really good page. It might be that the users are you know, on Google or another search engine. They're searching for a particular solution. Why are the leaves dropping off my ash tree? And they find your page and they click on it and they get their answer. And then they're like, oh, I have my answer. So I'm gonna go get out of here. I'm gonna close the browser. I'm gonna you know, go to Facebook, whatever, whatever it is that they're gonna do. So that would produce a high bounce rate. If a lot of users are doing that, that's a high bounce rate, but that might be okay uh, for that page because of the purpose of the page. On the other hand, if you have a page that is a list of links to resources within your site, um, and so your intention is, I want somebody to come to this page, they're not really gonna see anything here, but they're gonna choose one of these links to click and then you see that page has a high bounce rate, that should concern you, right? Assuming those links that they're choosing from are internal links, that they're inside of your website or inside of our domain. That should concern you because then people are not clicking those links, right? If they have a high bounce rate, they're looking at that page and going, this isn't for me, or this is boring, or this sucks, or whatever, and they're, they're going somewhere else. So you can see our bounce rate for all egg CMS sites uh, for uh, basically the last year and you can compare that to some of the other um, some of the other bounce rates by industry okay questions about bounce rate all right so i want to look at some of the metrics that you might use to detect engagement. Um, so some of the things like page views, they don't mean a ton, right? So you can look at your page views. Um, I'm not sure what you would do with that. Yeah, you could put them in an impact report or, or some other uh, report that you need to prepare, but you know, you could compare them to maybe last year or last month, right? Well, last month we had this many hits and this month we have this many hits. And so maybe that is some indication of growth, but it, but you have no idea what's happening on those page views, right? It could be somebody clicking that page and then immediately going somewhere else. Uh, it could be that they're spending 10 minutes on it, pouring over the information. Uh, so each of those page views obviously are not the same. Um, it's gonna be different for, for the user and, and that interaction. 
um, and there's no way to tell one from another. So they're, they're of limited value. But some of these metrics might give us an, some insight into uh, some actual engagement. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to go through and, and talk about each one of these. Um, and then uh, I'll share my screen and we'll open up Google Analytics and I'll kind of show you what they look like uh, in the reports um, and uh, explore that a little bit. So new versus returning visitors. So how does Google tell who's new and who's returning? Um, so most of these are tracked with a cookie. The cookie is it's a little piece of code that's delivered uh, usually to your web browser. Um, and so it indicates to your web browser, hey, you visited this page before. And if you come back again, Google Analytics can check your browser and see, well, does that cookie exist? And if you if it does exist, then you are a returning uh, user. The downside of using that that way of doing it is that uh, Google is going to miss some returning users, especially those people who uh, are visiting our sites from different devices. So if I visit, I open Google Chrome and I go and visit your site, um, and then a day later I open your site on my smartphone, um, I'm going to appear as new each time because that doesn't uh, carry over. So it it has some some flaws as all all this data does um, or some caveats anyway um, but that's how they that's how it's tracked um, the reason i bring this up is because visitors returning to your site might signal some engagement some follow-up uh, some pattern of loyalty coming back and maybe looking for more information about something um, so if you're looking at a given time range let's say the last year and you take a look at how many of how many people um, are new. They've only visited your site or had one session uh, within that time period, as opposed to people who have come back multiple times. Uh, you might be able to read some engagement into that. Right? They came, they got some information. Maybe they tried it. Maybe they tried a solution, or or uh, and then came back to see if they could find more information about what was going on. Um, or maybe they use that knowledge somehow and they want to build on that and see if there's more information that they can get. So that's where it might signal uh, some engagement. Uh, this can also be useful for comparing new users and returning users as a group. Um, you might be able to look at them and see some differences in terms of pages per visit or visit duration that might uh, prompt some improvement in your web presence where you can say, well, um, gee, new, new users are not really spending as much time as returning users. That might be logical, but it might also be a function of um, they might not know how, where to find things or they might not be comfortable uh, when they first visit our site. So um, that's another way that that uh, can potentially be used. And we'll take a look at that report later. Questions about new versus returning. Who's seen a Google Analytics report before? I just want to reply in the chat. Okay. That was really just a question to make sure that I was you're still hearing me. It was getting getting kind of quiet. So um, good. Well, so I hope I'm not covering uh, territory that you've already been over, but um, we'll kind of run through some more of these engagement metrics here. So another one to look at for detecting potential engagement is frequency is the frequency rec recency report and um, the name will become sort of explanatory because it really consists of two things. One is the count of sessions. Um, so for a given date range, how often are users returning during that date range? So the new versus returning will show you, oh, you know, let's say 51% of our traffic in that date range were returning users. 
but it's not going to show you how many times they returned, right? They could have returned once, they could have returned 20 times in that date range. You don't know. That's where count of sessions comes in. So count of sessions will show you a breakdown of your users and based on how many sessions they had during that date range from one uh, to 20 plus. Um, there's some ranges in there as well. It's, it's not, you know, it doesn't break it down, but 19 sessions, 18 sessions. Um, but it'll give you a general idea of how often are returning users coming back. The recency part is uh, how many days has it been since the last session? Thus recency, how often are users coming back, right? So if you're looking at a full year, are they coming back, you know, sort of every seven days, a weekly kind of thing? Are they coming back monthly? Um, is it mostly, you know, two count sessions where they were, they came once and then they came back three months later or six months later or nine months later? Um, so you can kind of get a sense of how often people are coming back. So you can see how either one of those numbers might be a signal of some engagement uh, and, and some site loyalty. So if you see, you know, for a given time period, let's say we're looking at six months or something like that, and you see session counts, hey, there's a thousand people uh, that had a, a, a session count of five, right? That might be something a little bit more meaningful to report uh, or to look at than I had 13,000 page views. Agree or disagree? Do you agree with that statement that count of sessions might might be a little bit more meaningful? Yeah, okay, good. Um, and then the, maybe similarly with, with uh, days since last session, maybe a little less um, reportable engagement there and a little bit more uh, just getting a sense of how users are using your site, how those returning users are coming back, and uh, are you keeping up with giving them new information uh, based on that recency, right? If you see people are coming back every seven days, um, but you're only posting new content to your website monthly, then you might ask yourself like, hey, how long, like, how long will they keep it up? How long will they keep coming back every seven days if they keep seeing the same exact thing? Okay, all right. So another metric, um, audience engagement, it says audience engagement rate, Google Analytics used to call it that. Now they just call it audience engagement. And again, here, Google Analytics uses two different metrics. The first one is session duration. So what that does is breaks down the number of, of sessions of a particular length, starting with zero seconds. Um, we can talk about that later. Um, but zero to 10 seconds, uh, 10 to 20 seconds, on and on, et cetera. So you can kind of see, um, now this is, isn't for a particular page, but for that session, how many people uh, spent 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, two minutes, et cetera. There's a caveat with this one in terms of how it's measured. And I, I was telling Sonia earlier today, I just found out about this today as I was doing some additional research for this. Um, the way that Google measures that session duration is um, that time sort of gets recorded within the session when a user goes from one page to another. So because they have to move from one page to another, it doesn't include um, it doesn't include the the uh, time spent on just one page. So if the session only had one page view in it, that time would not be considered. And the other thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't usually include the time spent on the exit page. And that's because um, they're not going to another page within our domain. So Google can't measure that, right? So, so we kind of take this one along with, with another one of the metrics that we're gonna have coming up with a little bit of, of a grain of salt. Um, so it can skew particular directions, um, but, uh, but it can be helpful, you know, when you're sort of looking at the middle there in terms of this of the session duration. Uh, the other metric that's involved in audience engagement is page depth. So that's just the number of pages viewed in a session. We looked earlier at pages uh, per session 
as a metric. Um, this is a little bit different because uh, when we're looking at pages per session, it's an overall average. And here, uh, when we look at page depth, it's going to show us the, the number of pages viewed in a session and then the number of users who fall into that, uh, that slot, right? So if we say five pages viewed per session, how many users viewed five pages per session? How many users viewed, or how, I should say, how many sessions did we have where only five pages were viewed? How many did we have where 10 pages were viewed? Okay, so again, these are a couple things that might signal engagement, right? So the in terms of session duration, we might be looking at that and saying, okay, if we're looking at a session duration of 30 seconds, we know that uh, it was a little bit more involved than just you know accidentally clicking on our site and going, ah, there's nothing here for me, and, leave, and then leaving. Um, same thing with the page depth, right? If people are digging in a little bit, um, it might uh, indicate a little bit more engagement. So time spent on page, this is going to be uh, have some similar issues uh, to session duration. Um, when we talk about time spent on page, this is the average time that a user spends on a specific page, okay? Um, or the average of the time users spend on each page per session. Um, just like the session duration caveat, it does not include these one page sessions or exit pages. Um, so we'll, I'll talk about how you might deal with that in, in terms of how much you trust the time spent on page. Um, but it can tell you or, or can give you some insight into, you know, what type of pages are people spending time on? And then you might ask yourself, you know, do I need more pages like that? And maybe look at pages where there's a low time spent on, on page. Um, and as long as that's not an exit page or a page where you expect a one page session to happen, uh, then you might ask, what, why do I have these pages, right? Are they just um, barriers for people to get to the, the content that they want if they have a very low time spent on page? All right, and then the last one, I mentioned this before, pages per session. We looked at that a little bit uh, before. Similar to page depth, but we're talking about an overall average here. The question tends to be, you know, can we judge that as engagement or is it just people bouncing around seeking information, maybe never really finding it? Um, so again, we have to, there's a couple of different ways to look at that pages per session. All right. I'm going to wrap up the, the last two slides before I switch so I don't have to switch back and forth between content too much. Um, but we'll do a little Google Analytics demo here in just a couple of minutes. Um, but first, I want to share a couple of things with you. Sarah Bachman, who uh, is sort of my uh, guru in all things evaluation, she's the project lead for the Military Families uh, Learning Network based in at Virginia Tech. Um, she she identifies these keys to evaluation like if you're gonna do any kind of evaluation including evaluating your google analytics your website you know knowing what your purpose is you know what, what are you trying to accomplish with your website knowing what your goals are and you know we talked about that in terms of conversions in google analytics right what do you want people to do i want people to fill out this form i want people to uh, subscribe to this newsletter i want people to read this article um, so understanding what your goals are, um, being consistent with the metrics and measurement over time, Google Analytics sort of does that for us. But when you start gathering your data, you know, make, making sure that you're comparing apples to apples, right? You're not comparing page views to sessions um, or anything like that, and that you're looking at the same kinds of reports if you're going to look at things over time and see if you're achieving your goals or not. Um, and then using the data to learn and improve, which goes back to that improvement idea. Um, this is probably the more, um, more pressing need when we talk about looking at our Google Analytics and evaluating our websites is like, um, instead of just reporting the numbers, you know, how can we look at the data and improve our web presence so that we can better achieve our goals and, and then maybe improve the, the numbers in the, in the process. And that all takes time and effort, like any evaluation. Um, so it does take thinking about this, setting some goals, uh, and getting into the Google Analytics and really kind of looking at some things. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen, and I will show you 
Google Analytics here. Just take a second. Any questions or comments before, as I'm taking some time to get my my desktop up here? All right, that's the wrong thing. One second here. Here we go. All right, there we go. So is everybody seeing that? Um, you should be seeing a big report. How visible is that? I don't know, you might need to I can zoom in if if you need me to. I still see your PowerPoint, Bob. What? All right. I wonder why that is. Oh, Stacy saw it. It's probably until I stopped presenting. All right. Let's try this again. How about now, Amelia? Are you seeing that? Yep. Okay, good. So this is how Google Analytics looks. Um, when we send you reports, when Sonia and I send you reports, they're gonna look something like this. Usually they're in PDF uh, format, um, so they can be kind of uh, similar, but they look, look basically similar. So I'm just gonna go through each of the ones that we um, that we talked about each of the engagement metrics and look at some of that. And then if you guys have questions about well, what else and what other metrics, we can we can uh, go through some of those as well. So this is the new versus returning visitor uh, report. And so if you look down uh, towards the bottom in the table there. Oh, okay. So Ken's saying he lost my voice while it was loading, and I don't. I probably didn't say anything too terribly important, Ken, other than. Can you see the can you see the screen? Um, so we're looking at the new versus returning visitor report here. So I, I just picked randomly, Cami. I swear I didn't know you were going to be on. So I just randomly picked the Plant Sciences um, website uh, to look at here. Um, and so as we take a look at that, uh, here's the the new versus returning. So 75,000 sessions, and this is looking at the last year, June 1, uh, 2015 to June 1, 2016. So they've had 75 sessions, thousand sessions, you know, plus, um, pretty even, right? 51% of them are new visitors, 48.9 uh, are um, are returning visitors. So pretty even balance there. Um, but as we go through that, we can see some some differences. So if we if you go over to the right in that table and you see in under behavior here we've got the bounce rate so in this case the bounce rate for new visitors quite a bit higher than returning visitors so that might be something that we might want to look at why is that maybe dig when we can dig into the metrics a little bit more to find some of that out um, and and see if we can figure out why that might be uh, pages per session 2.52 for new visitors, 3.83 for returning visitors. So again, a little bit of a discrepancy there. Maybe it's something that we want to look at. And the same thing with average session duration. Um, a minute 52 seconds average session duration for new visitors, much higher, four minutes and 17 seconds uh, for returning visitors. So to me, there's, there's a couple things that um, might be happening or that we might be able to take away from that. One is that comparative thing, right? How can we uh, get those numbers higher for new visitors? You know, is there something that we can do with our web design, how we're presenting things? Um, and then the other thing is we might be able to really see some engagement here, right? And we might be able to draw some conclusions about, you know what, when we get people coming back, uh, then um, they engage more, right? They spend more time during their sessions, they view more pages, as returning visitors than they do as new visitors. 
Any questions about that or insights that you might have uh, about that new versus returning kind of thing? Okay. So here's the, oops, let me get my tab up here. So this is the, uh, the frequency and recency report. So this is the, um, the, that second metric that we talked about. Um, and it's broken down in those two areas. Right now we're looking at the count of sessions. Um, so this, you see here the people who in this time period, so we're looking at a whole year, 38,000 of those, of, so about half, a little more than half of the, of the sessions were one-off sessions, right? They came once and at least as far as Google could track, they never came back during that year. Now, they might have come back on a different device. They might have, uh, you know, deleted their cookies off their browser and come back. Remember, because that cookie is the one is the thing that tracks that new versus returning. Um, but in general, we can kind of say, well, most of the traffic was one uh, one session during the year. And then you can kind of go down two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine through 14, et cetera. Um, and then the 200 and more ones. So the 201 plus, and actually 101 plus, Sony and I have kind of looked at that um, and tried to dig into that a little bit as that seems like a lot of sessions to us in a year and is that internal traffic. And so we have created some, what are called segments before that uh, filter that traffic out. And that's something that we can do, we can work with you to do. If you see something that you think is an anomaly and you like, you know what, I, I'd like to look at these numbers without that anomaly, we can help you do that um, as well. Okay, so that's the count of sessions. And then the other thing that we talked about in frequency recency is the days since the last session. Um, and that uh, here you can see uh, zero days since the last session. So um, that's basically people who came once uh, and then never came back. So we can kind of ignore that zero since it doesn't really apply uh, to one visit or one session during that date range. But then you can look at um, how many days between. Uh, and so, you know, we see a lot here in the one day between. Um, and quite a few in the eight to 14 day between, uh, 15 to 30 day between. Um, and so you can might, might make some inferences uh, about that and kind of looking at how frequently your returning visitors are coming back. Okay. Questions about that? Comments? So this is the engagement um, report, and um, we talked about that in terms of that session duration. Um, and all of the one uh, page sessions, so sessions in which the user only visited one page, um, are included in this zero to 10 seconds, uh, even if they spent 10 minutes on that page, right? This is this if you want to call it a flaw, it's sort of the blind spot of the report. We talked about how uh, in, in order for, Go for Google to be able to measure how long someone's been on a particular page, they have to click another page inside the site in the domain. And so if they only visit one page, they might be spending a lot of time in there. They're going to fall in the zero to 10 seconds range because Google can't measure them. But for those people who visited more than one page, you know, we can kind of, and, and that's another thing that we could do with the filtering is we could filter out those one page sessions and then take a, cl a closer look at this and then see, all right, of the people who we could actually measure, um, how many seconds are they spending um, on the site? But again, could be, a, could be a, an indication of engagement because they are spending time on the site. And then the other part of that engagement report is the page depth, uh, how many, uh, pages are they viewing within each session? So a little, it's different than the average pages per session because you're actually seeing, you know, 41,000 of those sessions just viewed one page, 
10,000 views to page and so on. Um, the less than one here, uh, those uh, numbers are usually caused by computer visits that uh, Google couldn't filter out. So it might be a web crawler, uh, like the search engines like I talked about, or some other kind of automated um, computerized visit that doesn't have a human being behind it. Um, and so sometimes Google doesn't get all of those out, but they do show up as less than one page depth um, because the full page uh, hadn't been loaded. So um, that's page depth and you can kind of get an idea of how many pages are, uh, are being viewed in each session. Okay. All right, I need to move this just a little bit here and because my tabs are behind this thing. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so the next metric that we're looking at here um, what metric are we looking at here? Oh, okay, so we're looking at time um, time spent on page or average time on page. Um, and so what I'm looking at here is called the All Pages Report. Uh, it looks at all the pages that were that were visited in that time range uh, for those sessions and breaks them down uh, that way. And this is where you could find the average time on page for that entire um, for all the sessions. And here it's uh, a minute and 24 seconds. Or you can drill down and see the average time on page uh, for each page. So you see this uh, Dakota Pinnacle page, average time on page is 5 minutes, 38 seconds. Remember, this, this number came with that caveat that, again, Google can't measure time until someone clicks another page. And it also they also can't um, measure the time on exit pages. So take this average, this time on page thing with a with a little bit of a grain of salt, um, especially if you look over in the right of this column and you see that percent exit. If that percent exit is pretty high, um, all of those visits, all of those page views that uh, were exits where people left their session after viewing that page, um, the time spent on that page didn't count. Right, so if we look at this this lecture um, in plant sciences, uh, a lecture for a course, uh, you can see that one here. It's line seven. Um, it's got three minutes and twenty four seconds as time spent on page, and we might think, oh, that's pretty good, but higher than the average um, for this for this report. Um, but it's got a sixty nine percent exit rate, so it's probably even higher than that because those exits, those that time that those people spent. Uh, did not figure into that. Same thing with Dakota Pinnacle. Looks like something that people are spending a lot of time on uh, because we've got a five minute, 38 second time on page and an 86% exit. So, so a lot of, uh, lot of uncounted time there. So uh, kind of take that, keep that in mind when you're looking at that time on, spent on page. All right, then I got one more here that I need to get to. Right, we talked a little bit about pages per session and session duration, and this shows up on this audience overview report for the entire session. Our average pages per session here, 3.16, uh, and our average session duration, three minutes and three seconds, again, with that same caveat for time spent on page. So those are some of the places that you might look if you're trying to detect engagement. There's other metrics in here that can definitely help you um, and or that might just be interesting. I didn't mean to make that sound like a bad thing. Sometimes interesting is interesting and, and sometimes it's even worth reporting uh, or sharing. So um, any questions at all about uh, Google Analytics? Are there certain things that you'd like to talk about or have me show you? Um, so Sonia's saying some low bounce rates uh, on the on the previous 
page. Let me take a look at that again. Yeah, those are pretty low bounce rates. So again, that what that's telling you is that uh, these these pages are not just one and done uh, pages. They're uh, part of a series of pages that are being viewed in the session. Um, when we see the one that's that the Dakota Pinnacle page here, that's 87%. That's going to indicate a lot of people came directly to that page, right? Either they were emailed the link or um, or they found it through search or whatever. They viewed that one page and then boom, they were they were out of there, off the session onto a different site. Other questions, things you want to know? What other kinds of things are you interested in when you're you're like? asking for reports or if you haven't asked for a report yet you know just what you're curious about uh, in your website nothing else okay um, well, just reiterate a couple things, right? If you want reports, just uh, let Sonia or, or me know. Um, we can set up those automated uh, reports if you want to get a monthly report. Uh, you can even get a weekly report or daily report if you want. Um, and those seem to have been working uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, if you want access to this, you want to poke around in this, um, you know, like I said, we just need a non-NDSU Google account for you. And we can share access to uh, to Google Analytics. There's nothing in here that you can break, right? You can't, uh, you know, take down the website or mess things up. Um, this is when you're in Google Analytics and logged in as you, it's sort of your dashboard, your personal view of how you want to look at things. Um, so you're welcome to, to poke around in there anytime. So don't be afraid to ask for that access if you want it. Okay, cool, Ken. Be happy to help. All right, well, I can stick around for a while if you guys have questions. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, wrap things up. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, third Wednesday of uh, next month, I don't know what date that is, and I don't know what the topic will be for the ACOM webinar, yet to be determined. Um, but I hope you'll uh, look for the email about that and check out Let's Communicate. Uh, for the topic of uh, the ACOM webinar, uh, third Wednesday of July. Thanks, everybody.